Hi guys, good evening. Uh, so, I'm going to do a tutorial on reverse engineering and your application using MobileSafe. Uh, so, MobileSafe, uh, short for Mobile Security Framework, is an automated pen testing framework for analyzing Android, iOS, and Windows mobile apps. Uh, it's an interesting tool to work with because it cuts the hassle of having to do manual and pen testing for Android applications. Uh, most of the processes involved using APK2, using text to jar, using uh, small dumpers and all, uh, it cuts all those processes and automates everything for you. So it's pretty pretty handy, but I wouldn't advise for a beginner to start using MobileSelf. I would want you to try your hands on other tools first before coming to MobileSelf. MobileSelf should be just for official um, pen tests or for people with experience around Android reverse engineering. Okay, so we'll just go quickly into it. Uh, first thing will be for you to go and clone the repo. Um, so this is basic mobile self. Uh, you could use it for static and dynamic mobile application uh, analysis, the reverse engineering or pen tests as you call it. Okay, so go ahead and clone it. Uh, but for me, I already have it installed. Okay, so there are put a um, couple of options. One is clone it and run it as a Django application. Uh, that's one. Two, so you could download one or two of these um, Android reverse engineering virtual machines, Android Tema and Black Arch. Okay, there's also Santoku that uh, bundles a uh, mobile safe. So whichever you choose, uh, well personally I use the Docker instance, which is easier to run. So you could clone the scripts and then run, uh, create a Docker instance, a Docker image, and run. But I use the pre-built Docker image on Docker Hub, uh, so I'm quite lazy, and I use um, there's a second. Let me start my Docker. Okay, so Docker is up and running, it's starting now. Uh, so and I'll go use Skytematic. Uh, normally I run from console, but today I'm being lazy, so I'm just going to use a GUI um, version for doc managing my Docker instance. Okay, so I have more basic here already. Uh, so I'm just going to start. Okay, so my more recent instance started already. So, which whoever works for you, if you want to clone the GitHub repo and run as a regular Django app, or create your Docker image from the repo, or use a pre built image from Docker Hub, whichever works for you, all better. Okay, so I have it running already. What I'm going to do is open it up in the web browser. Okay, great. And then for uh, the APK file I'm using as a test uh, for this, for the course of this um, tutorial, is one gotten from a hacker, one of Hacker One's CTF. So Hacker One, they had a CTF uh, sometime last year, I think sometime in July or so. Yeah, July, I guess it is. Uh, so I'll just be using some of their APKs. Uh, Okay, so stop. Oh, where are you? Okay, yes, I, this is it. Okay, so while it's analyzing, uh, for this particular APK, uh, there were six six levels of uh, challenge, six levels uh, challenges for this particular APK, and you are just to find flags. So analyze the APK file to find flags, and then uh, submit to win a chance to, uh, to get a chance to win one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars US dollars and visit Las Vegas. Okay, it's still analyzing.
take quite a while if my time is done you would get to like move yourself trust me you would Okay, great. Uh, so our file has been analyzed already. Uh, so cool thing about MobileSafe is the awesome dashboard. Uh, all props to Django, uh, which I'm a staunch uh, fanatic of, or advertiser, or user, whatever you see. Yeah, I love Django very much. Uh, okay, so this is a cool, interesting dashboard. Now first, you have the information tab. That shows basic information about the APK you just analyzed. Uh, so the icon of the APK once you run it on your device, this icon. Uh, file information. Okay, so the name. This is the name of the APK. Yeah, CTF one. That blah blah blah. Uh, the size. The MD five hash. Uh, SHA one hash. So this is useful if you're doing malware analysis where you have to uh, generate hash values of the file. And cross check against a uh, malware databases. Uh, so this automatically does that for you, generates the hash, the common, uh, the three most common hash uh, uh, values. So MD5, SHA1, and SHA256. Okay, so this uh, hash file, the uh, hash values for the file. The next thing will have app, app information. Uh, so if you look over here, we have the package name uh, for this application, the main activity, uh, which is from H. One seven zero two dot ctf uh, ctf one dot main activity uh, the target SDK it was built for it was compiled for and the min minimum uh, minimum SDK uh, maximum SDK does not no range of manual okay, Android version name one point zero Android version code one ah okay here then here we have activities uh just two activities two activities for this application. Uh, so you click on it and it takes you directly to the activities and so you see we have two activities the main activity and another activity level three activity uh okay so back to the top we have services uh, zero services for this application zero receivers zero providers one exported activity zero exported services Exported receiver, but depending on the application you're analyzing, uh, to show the appropriate uh, number of services or receivers or providers uh, in for that application. Uh, then you have scan options as well. You could decide to rescan if you're not uh, if you're not comfortable, okay, with the results you got. You could decide to rescan. You think it doesn't probably scan. You could start the dynamic analysis. Yeah, like I'm sorry, like I mentioned, MobileSafe has both static and dynamic analysis. Um, platform it gives you the option to do static and dynamic analysis of your applications uh, so APKs, uh, iOS applications and Windows applications Windows mobile applications ah, then another nice thing here you could view the code so you could view the Java version of the code uh, which I'm just gonna go ahead and open yeah so you see it's already compiled uh, our APK file and so you have code uh, files here in java in java so you could just whichever you choose also in this case this admin activity you could open up and nice nice and cool uh, yeah then also uh, you could download the java code so personally for me uh, I do not like text editors or code editors or reading code with, uh, on your white background so I prefer to download the java code and export to my code editor because Visual Studio Code, and then analyze there, do my static analysis there. It's awesome for me that way, uh, compared to having to uh, read code off a white background. It affects my eyes. Uh, you could also you have a small code as well, and you could view the small code or download small code, uh, then view the annual manifest, which usually is the first place I advise people reversing. Um, Android APKs, APKs to go to look at. Uh, so, you view the Android manifests. Uh, so, we have a manifest here which gives basic information about the APK uh, 
services, in, uh, intents and activities that are being used in the application. So they have basic information about it here in APK. Ah, what else? So back to our dashboard. Yeah, so you have to send out certificates um, tab where it shows sign out certificates uh, information. Now, normally, if you're going to be doing this thing, one, this one other, you'll be using uh, APK2, uh, that's uh, the P PC, PCKS7, yeah, I think, to get this information. Uh, but uh, luckily for us, MobSF does that automatically on the fly. And so you don't have to go through the process of doing that. So it's just left for you to load, to load up the APK to MobSF and then it does the analysis. Ah, uh, so cool. So based on this, based on this sign certificate, you can provide attribution. But bear in mind that most malware authors now fake uh, sign certificates to throw you off the uh, sense. Uh, but at least this provides uh, information enough to start building a case for malware attribution or uh, the, uh, attribution for the malware author. Um, okay. Then you have permissions tab. I show under permissions. That this application uh, requires, uh, so basically just to, in this case, in the case of the APK, just two permissions, two hundred permission to access network states, and the permission to access internet. Uh, so basically, so you have the permission, the status of the permission, information about the permission and description. Basically, that uh, binary analysis. Okay. Um, in this case, there was no no Android Fire binary analysis. So if we had native libraries being called in this application, uh, it would have been shown on this part. Uh, we have Android API analysis uh, tab, where you see APIs, API calls, and the files where these calls are made, where they are referenced in this application. Now, um, what else? Yes. Uh, so. Whatever APK, uh, APK uh, sorry, API calls that are made to the application, you see the corresponding files where the calls are made, where they are referenced, and you can browse through the files. So, for example, in this case, if I was while testing this application, I was looking for SQL injections. Uh, whenever I see an APK, uh, API call made to the database, I'll just simply need to refer, uh, look at the files and make a reference. Or if I was testing to uh, enforce the Cryptographic function, uh, look at the crypto API and then go to the corresponding uh, file, uh, Java file, and then uh, go through the code and analyze. Uh, so, like I said, I export my Java code to my code editor, Visual Studio, and then do the cross checking. So, I come back to MobSF dashboard, uh, look through, and go to my Visual Studio code, analyze there. Uh, it's much easier for me that way. Ah, uh, okay, TCP sockets. So these are all connection uh, TCP, TCP sockets uh, API calls and their uh, corresponding files where the calls are. And then we have the browsable activities tab. Uh, so activities normally will be like shown under here, but there's none for this APK. We have manifest analysis. And that shows uh, So this basically analyzes uh, the manifest file. Analyzes the manifest file and then shows us a uh, and builds up analysis. So basically, from the manifest file, application data can be backed up, uh, given by this particular line in the manifest file. Uh, so and this is it has a severity rating based off OWASP stop then uh, sorry, yeah based off OWASP uh, mobile application security guide uh, framework. Uh, so security things are given, risk ratings are given uh, in MobSF. So it could help you see when you're doing if you're doing uh, an official pen test, uh, or yeah, this could help in your pen testing uh, process. Uh, okay, so the description flag allows anyone to backup your data data application data via EDB, allows users who have enabled USB debugging to copy application data of the device. Uh, then this activity is not protected so it allows the so exported activity here and uh, activity is fun to be shared with other apps uh, so possibly if you have another application on the same device you could have access to this activity and uh, copy off 
application data. Here, then you have the code analysis, uh, under security analysis tab, we have sub tabs, manifest analysis, which we looked at already, uh, code analysis. So, the code analysis uh, uh, feature allows us does basically static analysis. So, it's there for you to now take a static analysis for that by looking at the code yourself. So, from this case, uh, application log sensitive information. Uh, if we look at this, there's a Monte Carlo function here, uh, arrays, arrays. If we look at this, there's a possibility that something has been. That's it. The, uh, where is it? Okay, Monte Carlo. Yeah. So, there's a possibility. Yeah. So there's data data being uh, saved that uh, being logged they saved in the screen. Okay, so log the yeah, okay, this is it. So log there's a log function called here and that tells us that data is being logged, which uh, it's just okay, in terms of severity, this is just an info info. So it's left for you to now statically analyze the better and look through it and see uh how how true it is or how Relevant it is to your pen test your analysis. Uh, quite a lot. Okay, in this case, the application is a random number generator, which has a severity rating of high. So this tells you random number generator is used either in generating um, secure in generating supporting secure codes or passwords or code basically uh, generating code secure codes, supposedly secure codes. Okay, then you have defined analysis. So if analysis parts uh, tells you give you information basic information about the file in this case there's something here uh dx model analysis i don't have apk id enabled if i still have try to check the, uh, the file and see if malware uh, development features were enabled on it uh, by checking anti vm uh, so some files they have anti vm features enabled so to detect if the file is being run in the vm to check if the code is obfuscated if it's a uh, if it's packed using a packer or anti assembly features were enabled as well. But I don't have APK ID installed, uh, installed on this machine, which I will do later though. And then just a model check as well for URLs. Uh, in this case, uh, every every single URL located in the, uh, every single URL that's identified in APK, that's extracted from APK, it does a, mod, a domain check to see against a uh, malware domain uh, databases and check to see if uh, these URLs have been uh, have malware written or uh, mal have been flagged as malware malicious domains uh, URL okay so this I guess was the only URL that was identified in the APK uh, there are no emails in this particular APK strings but if there were it to exist emails or, or other strings and variable strings it should have been um, listed out here uh, activities or activities we have no services, no broadcast receivers, controller, libraries, none of these files. Okay, so this shows a listing of all the files in the extracted. Now, basically, an APK file is just a zip file. So, if you extract the APK out as a zip file, uh, this is what you have in a folder view. Uh, these are all the files in the APK. So, it shows them all here. Uh, in this case, uh, we have something a suspicious looking file which is this asset this is not a secret uh, level file this is suspicious looking now if you should if you should inspect this further on we'll find out that the flag for this particular challenge is embedded in this file uh, so same thing with uh, malware if you're going to do malware analysis you might find out that some suspicious looking files like this will exist in your APK and then will give clues as to how the malware operates or uh, the dropper functions of malware. Uh, what else? What else have we not talked about? Okay, so these are uh, files. Yeah, I think that's basically that. That's all about MopSF uh, for static analysis. And then you could download the report as well. Uh, so download reports. It automatically generates reports. Now this, this is a report of uh, APK file. Uh, download uh, generator reports. Okay, it's just a simple report. Um, which you can go ahead and save as PDF or print in whatever format uh, you want. Uh, then you can also start dynamic analysis. 
now I do not have a VM snapshot on emulator already existing on my device. But if I were to have an emulator, what I need to do is create the environment and then it does a full dynamic analysis of the APK file. Okay, so in another tutorial, I will do a dynamic analysis of a malicious APK file or not necessarily but of an APK file using MobSF. Uh, that will be all for now on this tutorial. So you could go ahead and do amazing, yeah, amazing research or analysis with uh, MobSF using MobSF. Simplify your pen testing process and then make life easier. Come out with amazing research. Thanks, and please click the subscribe button.